Welcome to Army Focus. I'm Austin Bechtold. And I'm John Hanna. Great to be back with you after quite a long summer. John, it's been about seven months. It's, it's been a really long time since we shut down on March 10th. So let me ask you, John, how was your summer? What did you do during this quarantine period that we had? Well, I actually worked a lot. I work at a grocery store, so uh, I was doing that a lot of time. But I did take a couple days off. I actually met you down in Erie for some Kmart Cup Basketball Summer League. Kmart Cup Basketball was a lot of fun. I also worked two jobs, was really busy. But on a somber note, today is 9-11, John. That's right. Today is 9-11, and it's also known as Patriots Day. Uh, September 11th, obviously, is a big tragedy. Uh, and that is a very solemn day, as mentioned earlier, uh, to remember those who died in the September 11th attacks on both the World Trade Center, the Pentagon, and the one in Shankstown, or Shanksville, Mass Pennsylvania, excuse me, and give back in their names. Former President George W. Bush declared the first Patriot Day just before September 11th in 2002. That was a year after the attacks that claimed nearly 3,000 lives. On September 11, 2001, terrorists hijacked four planes. Two of them crashed into the world, both World Trade Center buildings in New York City, causing them to collapse. Another plane crashed into the Pentagon, while the fourth went down in a field in Shanksville, Pennsylvania, after passengers struggled with hijackers. On Patriot Day, you can honor their memories by volunteering, spreading kindness, and participating in remembrance visuals. Former President Barack Obama expanded Patriot Day in 2016 to include a National Day of Service and Remembrance. David Michael Barkway. Matthew Barnes. Melissa Rose Barnes. Sheila Patricia Barnes. Evan J. Barron. Renee Barrett Arjun. Arthur Thaddeus Barry. Diane G. Barry. Maurice. This is here at Robert Morris. And it also saw the start of lots of events coming on here on campus. First, the Office of Residence Life hosted Nail It Weekend, which ran from Friday to Sunday. All students were invited to participate in a competition similar to Netflix's Nail It Show. The prizes included a $50 gift card and an RMU Nailed It trophy. On Tuesday this week, the Sports Management Association held their first SMA meeting of the year. The meeting took place online. The Center for Student Success and Act 101 held a workshop for student success in a virtual environment. The workshop was focused on helping students succeed in virtual classes. And finally, Delta Tau Delta hosted a rush event, mini golf event located at the Island Sports Center. Mini golf has been a popular topic around campus this semester, and we will be going into more detail with that later on in the show with John Hanna. Austin Bechtold is now standing over with Colonial Sports Network Editor-in-Chief editor Nick Hederick. Austin, what do you have for us? Nick Hederick, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me, Austin. I was, as you can see, not prepared to be here, but uh, I'm honored to be here regardless. Well, you're our fearless leader and always... That's one term for it. You're, I'm just happy that you're here with us. So, in these last seven months, a lot has changed in the world of sports. Recap really what has happened. Let's get up to speed. I think it's better to say what hasn't happened in the world of sports. The whole way... We consume sports as fans and as journalists has just completely changed. I mean, we're seeing virtual fans now. We're seeing bubbles, which is a fun word to say. So, like, I don't mind that they're calling it bubbles. But <laughs> a, lot, but, a lot has I changed. Mean, advertisements I mean, on the court. Absolutely. Advertisements on the court. And just the whole – the shape of America right now is such an intriguing time. There's a lot of change going on. And, I mean, that's being incorporated into sports, too. And it's just a very interesting time, and it's very cool to see sports be at the forefront of this change and seeing athletes use their platform, things of that nature. It's a very powerful movement we're seeing from these athletes now. And 
sports change as a whole. So how has sports changed at RMU now? What, what really is different uh, in the last couple months that we've been able to see? Well, obviously there's been some conference changes and we're going to talk about that, I think, right after this question's done. So let's, let's, dive, let's dive right into it. I had more, but yeah, I mean, why not? So why not? RMU is going to the Horizon League. Right. How excited are you for that change? Right. And back to your previous question of how has RMU sports changed? I mean, you think of that NEC championship game. I mean, we're probably not going to have as many fans, if any fans at all, in these next couple right. months. I mean, imagine that game without any fans there. That's a huge change, and I think that's going to be the case for a while now. But to your question about the Horizon League, I mean, this is a great move. I love this move so much, specifically for the basketball teams. They're always fairly competitive, the women's team a little more than the men's up until this recent year. The men's mm -hmm. always in the middle towards the top, but struggled to get that big win. Um, but as we saw last year, uh, well, not even last year, <laughs> seven months ago, yeah. finally punched their ticket to March Madness for the first time in probably a little over a half decade or so, I believe it was. Might right. be wrong on that number. But I love this move. It's the perfect move for them to make. We've seen Horizon League teams, uh, Butler no longer there anymore, but we've seen them make a run even to the national championship game of men's basketball. Women's basketball regularly just beating up on the rest of the NEC. I love that move it's for them, too. Hopefully that will continue. Who, who knows what would have happened if there was no sports at that game? If Football, I knew, I wouldn't be here. That's right. for sure. Football also moves to the Big South. But let's hand it over to John Hanna with more. Thank you, Nick, and thank you, Austin. And to keep up with the latest Big, or Big South Horizon League and the Atlantic Hockey for Hockey and the CHA for Women's Hockey, uh, stay tuned to Colonial Sports Network where we catch Austin, Nick, myself, so much more. Stay tuned to ColonialSportsNetwork.com. And speaking of sports, after the break, I'm going to be sitting down with Cameron Mac Macariola to discuss the latest mini golf league that will be coming to campus. Stay tuned here on RMU Focus. Hey, Dad, I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Hey, Bobo. Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to RMU Focus. John Hanna is sitting down with Mini Golf Commissioner Cameron Macarola. John, what do you got for us? Thank you, Austin. As you mentioned, I'm here with uh, the new Mini Golf uh, <laughs> Coordinator, uh, Cameron Macariola. Thanks for coming on today, yeah, Cameron. Thanks for having me. So, first question why Mini Golf? Well, as a freshman to RMU, I uh, got here early and I was uh, very bored with a few friends and we wanted something to do and we went to the island for Mini Golf and then the next day we were bored. And then we went to the island again for mini golf, and it was just something to do. So what made you decide to, you know, turn this into a league? Oh, man. Uh, we kind of just, like, rolled the ball. Like, we decided we're, we were just coming up with new ideas. Like, we should make this into a league and, like, make it big or something and then get trophies and have a whole system for it. <laughs> 
And then sort of break down that system for me. How long are you planning the season for? Oh, uh, we were planning to have the season start. We were actually going to start this week and then go until November 1st, and then we were going to start the playoffs then. And how many rounds a week were you thinking? Uh, we were going to just do it like one day out of a week. Uh, Sunday at 7 was when we were going to plan to do it, so that's hopefully when we're going to get it on. Uh, and do you need any skill level to participate, or can I call up my buddy Phil Mickelson and just no. run the league? <laughs> well, you don't really need any level. You can get from not even knowing how to play mini golf to knowing how to play mini golf, even though there's like pros and leagues, stuff like that. Have you ever tried out for one of those pro leagues? No, not whatsoever. But I did, start in this league, I did have to pull up some YouTube clips for <laughs> professional mini golfers. And what would you describe your skill level as, as the commissioner? My skill level? I would say I'm okay at mini golf, but I'm not great. I do golf normally and do some par three, but I'm better at mini golf than I am golf. <laughs> Any chances for expansion next season, depending on how it goes? Uh, yeah, we would like to, so far, currently, we only have 10 uh, players competing, so hopefully we can get more than 10 and bring more people in and get a big league system going. And then how can people get involved? Uh, we have, we created an Instagram and Twitter, the RMU Golf Tour, I believe, Mini Golf Tour, on Instagram, and you can just send us a message or find uh, me and just talk to me about it. And then why should people join this? Why should people? Uh, fun. It's relaxed, laid back, just going out to have a good time and play some mini golf. And then I know you mentioned awards a bit earlier. Uh, <laughs> what sort of awards are we talking? Are we talking big trophies, little trophies? So we wanted to reward people, weekly people, for if they win the day, the Sunday that we play. So we got a belt coming in, like a WWE belt. So that's going to be a lot of fun once we get that. And then we got a trophy for last place for the worst golfer. I think, <laughs> I think Austin's going to be winning that one a lot. Yeah. And then we, once we get the season going, we're going to order the championship trophy. And how, and how are you do, going to be deciding who, like how, who makes the playoffs? Uh, we're probably, for the first season, we we'll probably have 10 people, so everyone makes it, and then probably just cut down from there. And then hopefully we get more people in the spring, and then what we want to do is have the spring champion play the uh, fall champion for the whole school year champion. All right, and then last question. And I watch a lot of actual golf. Yeah. So if I manage to hit a hole in one on a, on a hole, do I win a car? Uh, yeah. We, we can find a way to get you a car if you get a hole in one. All right, well, thank you very much, Cameron. Yeah, I would you. shake your hand, but we kind of can't <laughs> right now. Now I'm going to send it back over to Austin Bechtold. Well, John Hanna, you, that was interesting. Thanks for that. Uh, you're just underestimating my mini golf game, I guess. I don't know. But for the latest in news and arts and entertainment, make sure to visit rmucentrumedia.com. You can also find popular podcasts like Where's the News, where Nick Hedrick is on, and Baldwin and the Berg, which I'm on. We'll be back in two minutes on RMU Focus, first show back of the semester. See you then. Hey, Dad. I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um. Will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior, will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> selfies nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. 
Craig, come on, man, let's put it right home. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! And welcome back to RMU Focus. Now, la this week isn't only just the third week of school, or next week isn't only the third week of school, but it's also Greek week, uh, where you can rush all your favorite fraternities and sororities, including Zeta Tau Alpha. And speaking of Zeta Tau Alpha, Austin Bechtold is over sitting down with Maddie Seitzinger to talk about Greek week. Austin, what do you have for us? Well, thank you, John. Maddie, thanks for coming on the show for, with us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So I first want to ask you, why did you join Zeta? So I joined Zeta, well, I joined a sorority just to get more involved. Um, Robert Morris, um, you, you guys know, there's not very much to do. So I decided to take initiative and join a sorority. All of my friends that I met in the first week, they encouraged me. So I was like, yeah, let's go, let's do it. So how many people would you say are in your sorority? There are 46 sisters in our sorority. Wow, yeah. it's a lot. What, yeah. uh, is that? Do you think that's a good? That's a good thing that there's that many people. In oh the yeah, I feel like the more the better. So what do you value in being part of it? Oh, I definitely value my um, relationships with my sisters. Um, it's not. It's nothing like just having a friend. Like they're there for you night and day. They're here to help with you with your um, homework, schoolwork. If you're just having a bad day and like they just know like they are very very like telling yeah so how do you think the organization has changed you do you think you've been changed for the better because of it oh absolutely i feel like i don't just do things for myself anymore i think about my sisters and my organization but before i think about myself so over quarantine it was a long time since we've been back on campus has Zeta yeah. done anything um since then during that little gap period to make sure people are still involved um, well, we have had some virtual um, chapters online. We check in with each other all of the time. And um, some of the sisters that live around the Pittsburgh area, we would go to downtown and like check out, like see each other and just check how everybody's doing. And it was a lot of fun. So what type of events and fundraisers are usually done during the year? Oh, okay. So we have a whole bunch. So our philanthropy is education, of like breast cancer education and awareness. So um, we are for breast cancer and just cancer in general. So we do um, we do the pink the pink out game. Mm -hmm. We do it for football and hockey. We what else do we do? Um, we what else? Lots of lots of good events though around yeah. campus to be able no, to just yeah. promote. Absolutely. So what would you say has been your favorite moment so far, Maddie? Um, I feel like my favorite moment was bid day. Bid day is the day after recruitment. Um, well, the recruitment leads up to bid day, and bid day is the day where you find out what sorority you're going to get. So when is recruitment? So recruitment's in two weeks. Um, what events usually go on during recruitment to just kind of draw interest and have someone be able to know where they would fit in? So we go through a series of three different nights. Um, they, we, the first night is really just intro, an introduction into like the sisterhood and then we do um, philanthropy night and um, recruit, like um, recruitment night. So then the next day is bid day and um, based on like what your preference, it, preference is, those three nights you'll get a bid from the sorority you want. So how can someone attend? Is it going to be all online this year? Are the sisters going to be helping out on, somewhere on campus? So yeah, it is going to be all online this year. It's all virtual. Um, there, all sororities are all over campus right now, um, tabling, getting people excited. We definitely want a lot, a lot of girls to be interested and try it. Yeah. So, Maddie, finally, why should someone, in your opinion, join a sorority here at Robert Morris? Oh, I feel like it's 
definitely a different um, thing to go through. Like, I never thought I was going to join a sorority, and then it ended up changing my life. I have the best of friends in my sorority, and people that even aren't in my sorority that are in different sororities I'm cl very close with too. I live in my sorority suite this year and I have had so much fun already. It's definitely not boring. My social pod, I can hang out with them whenever I want. So I don't know, I definitely enjoy being in a sorority. It's definitely a great experience. Well, Maddie, I wanna thank you for coming on and representing Zeta Tau Alpha. We're gonna send it back over to John Hanna. John? Thank you, Austin and Maddie, and can't get enough of RMU Focus? How could you? Make sure to check out our other RMU TV shows. RMU Live, Mondays at 1 p.m. RMU Tonight at Sport and Sports Talk in the Berg rotate every other Friday starting at 5. And of course, our flagship program, Colonial Sports Center, is at 9.30 every Thursday night talking the latest Colonial sports, even though there aren't that many right now. And Austin, I know you have a new show coming up on the horizon. What's that about? I do. It's still in production right now, but it's going to be like an entertainment TV music review. It's going to be Monday nights at 7, so the pieces are still being put into place, but it's going to be a great show that you should definitely check out, John. Not only that, but also coming up after the break, Austin and I are going to break down our places to be not only on campus, but also in the greater Pittsburgh area, so stay tuned here on Colonial Sports Center and RMU Focus. Hey, Dad. I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the waters. Oh, borders. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um. Will you go to prom with me? Yes. <laughs> you don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior, will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Hey Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! Welcome back to RMU Focus. Before we move forward, John Hanna, we're both on Sports Talk in the Berg, and you said it's every other Friday. I, I did say Wednesday earlier. It is on Wednesday. But, John, it's also your last show today yes, on is. RMU Focus. Not Colonial Sports Center. No, it it's is not still Colonial. On that show, yeah, hopefully. maybe it's a good thing that you're going into retirement. That's okay. So, you may be in your dorm more than ever this semester with all the regulations put in place with the coronavirus. So you're probably looking for some shows to watch. Well, I got some for you. How about Big Brother? It's on CBS. It's one of my favorite shows. You and shows. Big Brother. And you know what? That is going to be one prime topic that is going to be talked about on my new shows, Monday Night at 7, if we want to plug it even more. Also, Person of Interest is on Netflix. I'm currently watching this with my roommates, but it's being taken off of Netflix on September 22nd. So if you want to watch it, you better hurry up. Also, hey, Cobra Kai just got put on Netflix. That is another great thing to watch. Also to watch, football is back. Last night, Kansas City Chiefs crushing the Houston Texans. This week coming up, a full slate on Sunday, and also a doubleheader on Monday night yep. that we'll also get into. I think into. every team has something to look forward to, unless you're an Eagles fan. Or unless you're a fan of the Jacksonville Jaguars. 
But or the Jets. That's kind of sad. Or the Jets, yeah. Any New York sports fan can't be dealing too good with anything right now. It doesn't count. So uh, what's going on with this week at RMU, John? Well, starting off on, uh, we're going to start off Tuesday, is actually going to be Bocce, hosted by the Voci Italiane Club. Uh, it's a Good tournament. pronunciation there. Thank you. I actually am half Italian. Uh, Tuesday at 4 p.m. on the Nicholson front lawn. For those of you who don't know, Bocce, it's, it's sort of like a lawn bowling type game. Uh, two teams battle it out, trying to get closest to the uh, uh, little white ball, which can be called many things. It's called a jack in my family. Uh, this Saturday online is a Quiplash tournament hosted by Residence Life and Washington Hall residents. Uh, if anyone likes music, uh, same time on Sunday, Hancock, the Hancock Hall Residence and Residence Life is hosting a musical trivia night. See if you know, can guess some of the songs. Anything past 1993, I think I'm out on. And then also, the SGA Activities Fair, where you can learn more about us and RME Century Media, is going to be actually online Thursday from 4 to 7 p.m. So if you're looking for a couple clubs to get into with the coronavirus, make sure you stay tuned to that. And Austin, what about in Pittsburgh this week? Yeah, going on in Pittsburgh, even though the virus is going on, there's still a couple fun events to be able to visit in the city. The Dependable Drive-In will be hosting movies on all their four screens, including Spider-Man Far From Home and also, John, Mean Girls. That's your favorite, isn't it? I've never seen Mean Girls. Are you, have you? <laughs> no. No? Oh, well. Well, adult, adult tickets are going to be $8, and children from the ages of 5 through 11 years old are $3. There you go. Also this weekend, Grow Pittsburgh is hosting Backyard Farm School at Churchview Farm. It's just a couple minutes from my house. Uh, that requires going to Baldwin. It does, so you have to do it. Administration is only $30. Admission is only $30 to attend. Lastly, Pitt Football is playing Austin P this Saturday and is the only sporting event in town this weekend with the Steelers Monday night and the Pirates at Kansas City. No fans will be allowed, but the game will be broadcast on the ACC Network at 4. Well, you mentioned football. I know my place to be is the bocce tournament hosted by Voci Italiane, but also to note, the Buff my Buffalo Bills Your are Buffalo taking on Bills. the New Jersey Jets Sunday at 1 p.m. The First New Sunday Jersey of, Jets? Hey, they play in East Rust for New Jersey. Okay, that's fair. So sit on your couch Sunday, watch entire football, get fat, then work it off playing bocce on Tuesday at 4 in front of Nicholson. So my place to be is extended from the weekend. You know, Monday night, sit on your couch, enjoy the night. Steeler football is back. Playing the New York Giants starting at 7. New Jersey Giants. Or the New Jersey Giants, whatever you'd want to call them. But football is back. We're happy to say it. Like we said earlier, Kansas City and Houston last night, the official start back. It's great to see. And if you like to hear the voices of Austin, myself, and Nick Hedder, but can't stand to look at our faces, make sure to check out RMU Radio for the latest, greatest podcasts, including Where's the News featuring Nick Hedder and Baldwin Lindbergh featuring Love Baldwin's favorite son, Austin Bechtold. And hopefully when sp RMU sports start back up, stay tuned for the best RMU athletics analysis, including Stack the Pads, which is my women's hockey yeah, podcast. John. Well, John, thank you for being on this show with me. Thank I really appreciate it. Thank you for having it. me. Oh, fist bump. Coronavirus. <laughs> But for Austin Bechtold and John Hanna, thank you for being here, and we will see you next Friday. Hey, Dad, I need your help asking Jessica to prom. Of course. Love is like the ocean. You have to tread the Oh, waters. Dad, that's not the kind of help I needed. Hey, Jessica. I, um, will you go to prom with me? Yes. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care can't wait to share their first with you. Let me tell you about the toughest guy on earth. He has the crazy strength to lift the man that raised him up without even flinching. This guy, no, this warrior, will always be by his father's side, even if his dad will hardly remember. If this guy isn't the toughest guy on the planet, then I don't know who is. Caregiving is tougher than tough. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org slash caregiving. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on, man, let's put a ride home. Hey, Bobo, 
Do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. Can birds draw pictures? I don't have an answer for that. Dad, do stars visit their friends? Look! 